We are moving on today to section 1.4, which is rewriting equations and formulas. And make sure you put the date at the top to set up your notes correctly. We're going to start with two vocabulary terms. The first vocabulary term is literal equations. Now, literal equations are different from regular equations because literal equations are a subset. They're an equation that has two or more variables. So in literal equations, you're going to have an x and a y term, or an a and a b and a c, two letters at least, in these literal equations. A formula which you've probably used before, a formula shows how one variable is related to one or more other variables. So you probably know that there's a formula for slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, that's a formula. So it shows you how x and y are related. The first section of today is working on actually being able to rewrite literal equations. This is probably one of the most important skills you will learn in algebra. You will use it in your science classes. You will use it in all of the rest of your math classes. You need to be able to manipulate these literal equations for different variables. The simplest version of this is when we ask you to solve the literal equation for y. And to do that, you're going to use your inverse operations. That's all this is, is using inverse operations over and over again to solve for different variables. In our first few examples, we're going to be solving for the letter Y each time, as the instructions tell us to do. Our first example is going to be 3Y plus 4X equals 9. So this is a literal equation because there are two different variables. There's a Y and an X. It makes it a literal equation. Now we're asked to solve for the y. What I need you to do is take the highlighter you should have picked up, go get a highlighter if you haven't, and highlight the letter y. That is what we want to get by itself. So we've got to make sure that we're focused on the correct variable each time. So I need to move everything away from the y, which means I want to move this 4x away from the y. The inverse of plus 4x is minus 4x. So I do that on this side, and I do this on this side. Now, are 9 and 4x like terms? I hope you said no, because they do not have the same variable, which means I cannot combine them. So when I rewrite my equation, I should just have 9 and then minus 4x. Okay, we cannot combine these because they're not like terms. So they get to sit right next to each other. We still want to get the y by itself, so we highlight it again. It's still not by itself. Currently, 3 and y are smushed next to each other, which means they're currently multiplied. The inverse of multiplication is division. So what I want you to do is draw one big fraction bar on both sides. That's step one. We see that the 3's will cancel, and I only have a y left on that side. Perfect. From the big fraction bar, I want you to make two smaller ones. So the first term divided by 3, and the second term divided by 3. See how that 3 got divided to both the 9 and the 4? They're separated by this minus sign, so I keep them separated by the minus sign. All that's left to do now is reduce. This is 9 divided by 3, which is just 3, and 4 divided by 3 is a decimal, so I'm going to leave this in fraction form. Leave it as a fraction, leave it as a fraction, leave it as a fraction. So we got our y isolated. We have solved the literal equation for y. The second example 
is 2y minus x equal to 9. Again, we're solving for y, so I'm going to take my highlighter and I'm going to highlight the y. That's what I want to get by itself. We need to isolate the term first before we isolate the variable, which means that this x is going to have to go on the opposite side. To move it across the equal sign, I use inverse operations. The inverse of subtraction is addition, so I add on both sides. Are 9 and x like terms? No. So I would write 9 plus x. They're not like terms, so I cannot combine them. We have 2y equal to 9 plus x. We're still trying to solve for the y, so I'm going to highlight it. And to use inverse operations to get the y by itself, currently 2 and y are multiplied, so to undo it, I do a big division sign on both sides. Hooray! The y is isolated. And I have a big division, I make two smaller divisions. This would be 9 divided by 2, and this would be the invisible coefficient, which is 1 divided by 2 with the x. Now, can either of these two fractions be reduced to a whole number? No, they'd both remain as fractions or decimals, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Leave it as a fraction, leave it as a fraction, leave it as a fraction. Should you leave it as a fraction? Yes. Okay. Example 3, I want you to try on your own. We have 3x minus 6y equal to 6. Take a second and try this one on your own. Solve the equation for y. You should start by highlighting the y and realizing what we need to move. This 3x does not have a y in it, so I want to move it to the opposite side to get the y by itself. It's currently positive, so to get rid of it, I subtract. I cannot combine the 6 and 3x because they are not like terms. Again, highlight my y to make sure I'm looking for the right thing. Whatever's not highlighted is what we divide by. Big division sign, big division sign y should be equal to 6 divided by negative 6 minus 3 divided by negative 6 x. Can I reduce either of these? Yes, 6 divided by negative 6 is negative 1 and negative 3 divided by negative 6 is positive 1 half when I reduce that fraction. We have solved y, we have solved for y. How'd you do? The main reason that we want to work on this skill is for problems in science mostly, but also for problems when we want to rewrite or use formulas. The majority of the time you're going to be given information and you're going to have to solve for the correct variables so that you can just plug and chug. For your first example, you're given the following picture. Okay, you own this piece of land that the government is going to build a frontage road next to. Okay, this is my road. Okay, this is the frontage. Now, the government will pay you a certain amount of money for this frontage, but it depends on the width of your property that goes along the frontage versus the length, okay? You're told that the length is 500 feet, that the area of your property is 100,000, feet squared, and that you earn $5.50 per foot of frontage. Okay, if this were a word problem, all of this information would be given to you in the word problem. Then they would ask you the following question. They would say, find the frontage of your lot. find the frontage of your lot. Well, you need to know what your width is. So really you want to solve for W. The equation for area is area equals length times width. 
So we want to get the width, or the W, by itself so we can figure out our frontage. L and W are smushed next to each other right now, and we want to isolate the W. So to undo multiplication, I use division. Therefore, I get that my width is going to be equal to my area divided by the length. Well, don't I know both the area and the length? I do. Those were given to me. So I should have 100,000 divided by 500. When you plug that into a calculator or do it in your head, you should get that your width is 200 feet. The benefit of this changing it is that we just get to plug and chug. We solve with variables, plug and chug with numbers. So my, my frontage is 200 feet. Now how much money would I make from the government? How much would they pay me to build that road there? Well, if I get $5.50 per foot and I have 200 feet, okay, my money would give me, uh, this is part B, how much are you paid for the frontage for the government to build that road? Well, if I have 200 feet and I earn $5.50 per foot, when I plug that in my calculator, I would get that I would earn $1,100 for them to build that road. Let's say we're given the following word problem. They're asking you in degrees Fahrenheit, okay, temperature, which planet is warmer? And they give you the following information. They say Mercury is 427 degrees Celsius, and Venus is 864 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what you're given, and they say, which planet is warmer? Please measure in Fahrenheit. All right, so we know, and if you don't know, you can Google it, that the formula for Celsius to, to Fahrenheit is C equals 5 ninths F minus 32. That's the formula to convert. Well, we want to go to Fahrenheit. We want it to say F equals. So we're going to solve for F. Okay, first thing I want to do is get rid of this, this division problem, this fraction in front of my parentheses. Take it piece by piece. To get rid of division, like the bottom of the, of the fraction, we would multiply by that number. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 9. This would cross out the number in the bottom. I'd be left with 9c is equal to 5 times f minus 32. I'm still solving for f, so let's still highlight that guy. I need to divide this 5 away because it's currently multiplied. So I divide this side by 5, which divides that side by 5. I would have 9c divided by 5 is equal to f minus 32. I'm still solving for f. The inverse of subtracting 32 is adding 32. Can I combine 9 fifths c and 32? No, those are not like terms, so I don't get to combine them. I just create another term out there. There we go. I have my formula to change from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Awesome. So if I need to compare these two in Fahrenheit, I want to change Mercury to Fahrenheit. Okay, before Mercury was 427 degrees Celsius. To change that to Fahrenheit, I would take 9 times the Celsius degrees over 5 plus 32. Go on ahead and plug and chug that into your calculator.
When you finish, you should have gotten 800.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now since they're both in the same degree, we can compare. Which planet is warmer? By comparing the two degrees Fahrenheit, since they're in the same unit, I can tell that Venus is warmer. Our last few examples are just simply rewriting formulas. Some very common formulas, besides temperature, which we just did, is simple interest. This is number six. Simple interest. The formula for simple interest is I equals PRT. I equals PRT. The interest that you get is equal to the principal investment times the rate times the time. So how much money you put in the bank times the rate the bank gives you and how long you leave it there in years. That's how much money you'll get in interest. Well, we are asked to solve for R. Okay, if we solve for R, let's highlight it. Currently, P and T are being multiplied by R because all of those letters are smushed together. To undo multiplication, I use division. This would get rid of both the P and the T on the right-hand side, and I'd be left with the formula that R is equal to I over P times T. Okay, this is awesome. Now, the reason that this is important is, let's say you were given a problem and you were told that you earned $162.50 on a principal investment of $5,000 in a bank when you left it there for six months, which is one half of a year. What is the rate the bank gave you? If we had to plug all that information into the regular formula, it would be very, very confusing. But we have this solved for R, which means all I have to do is plug in the letters where they belong. I was 162.50, P is 5,000, and T is half a year. When I plug and chug that in a calculator, I'll get that my rate is 0 0.065 or 6.5 percent. That is the rate that the bank gave me on that investment. Last problem for today, let's say you're given distance. Okay, a pretty common formula. You know that distance is equal to rate times the time. You're also given that the distance that you traveled for some trip is 200 miles. You drove there at 50 miles per hour. How long did it take you to get there? So since we are missing t, what letter do you think we're going to solve this equation for? We're going to solve for the missing one, or t. It will make our numbers much, much easier. Go ahead and give this one a shot. So we're solving for T. We go ahead and highlight him. Currently T is next to the R. Since they're smushed next to each other, they are multiplied. To undo multiplication, I use the inverse, which is division. Therefore I get that T is equal to D divided by R. I'm already ready to solve for T. I drove 200 miles, or ran, I'm not going to run 200 miles, who am I kidding? and at a rate of 50 miles per hour. Plug and chug that in a calculator, 200 divided by 50 is equal to 4. So how long did it take you to go that far? 4 hours. That is your time.